DEI and ESG are killing many a video game company. But today we're talking to one of the major legendary players in the creation of Blizzard, the company that is known for genre-defining video games. One of the gentlemen who is largely credited with having created many of those genre-defining games, he's here, and he's ready to tell us when it was that Blizzard was truly lost. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. It is as ever a joy to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. An attitude of gratitude we have for each and every one of you listening. Yes, you! We're talking to you. And today we're talking with Mark Kern, who goes by Grums. He is one of the major players in having brought Diablo 2, StarCraft, and World of Warcraft to millions and millions of gamers, even being the man who helped define an entire sport, that's an eSport, as the national sport of Korea. Wow! Well, folks, today we're going to find out exactly when Mark Kern believes that Blizzard began dying. And, folks, in a way, even if you're not a video game fan, this is a chance for us to examine what causes these other companies to go down that same path and whether or not the companies we love are already too far gone. But then, and this, Grums, this goes to what I think you're all about, and you correct me if, if this is not what you're all about. We get to where that magic ends when you leave Blizzard. Can you tell the folks out there why it is that you left Blizzard? And then I want to bring that into focus for how that, I think, reflects you today. That There's a couple reasons for that. One is I, I went to Blizzard because I said, okay, I want to learn how to make great games, and then I want to try it on my own, right? Uh, so that was always in the back of my mind. But as I, as I spent, you know, seven, almost eight years at Blizzard, I was really forming a bond. But it was very, very stressful. It was very trying. And things were starting to change as money came into the company. Uh, you know, that that magical time of StarCraft development, it didn't feel quite like that anymore. And things were starting to get corporate. And there was a pivotal event that I'll never forget where uh, because we hadn't turned a profit because of the cost of World of Warcraft, um, the CEO and the and uh, one VP and two founders and I sat in an office and they said we're going to cut we're going to cut people from the team we're going to do we're going to do firings across the company and we need you to select 10% of your team to lay off and i said wait 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 we're about to ship something that's going to fix everything and these people have been crunching and killing themselves for the past year and a half to complete this project <clears throat> and this is not what we promised people you know, Blizzard was a family. We said we're not like EA. I personally went out and told them what we all told each other. We're not EA. We don't binge and purge, you know, hire teams and then fire them as soon as the game is done. This is wrong, I said. I said, if you need to trim the fat, you know, let me do it through performance reviews. You know, we can we can do it over the course of a couple of months here. We could do it right. But they said, no, everyone's got to go and it's got to be it's got to be in, in five days. And I said, this is wrong. And then I'll never forget uh, a VP at the time turned to me and said, well, we're a real company now. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, no. We're a real company now. And that means we're going to have all the BS of a real company that comes along with it. And we're no longer the blizzard that we were before. And we're going to be something different because we're making huge amounts of money now. Right. We're going to alter the essence, thinking that we can still do the same. Folks out there who are Star Wars fans, folks out there who are Marvel fans, are you hearing something similar to that right now? Change the essence. We'll still have the success. That's the belief. It it, it corrupts things over and over and over. Um, Grums, any any idea? Do you think that that is what caused World of Warcraft to degrade over time? I don't. I know you don't want to be disparaging, and many of the well, people that you worked with worked on it, those expansions. Fantastic but. team, and after we let the ten percent go, it was handled so poorly. Uh, I didn't have any say in how it was handled. We had people screaming in the parking lot, and and <laughs> it was it was nuts. And after that, uh, people were so upset that a large portion of the WoW team quit to go over and uh, to NCSoft and do WildStar, right? And the team was decimated, and we were trying to put out fires, trying to get this game 
this handle this massive growth of the game uh, and server capacities and code and everything else that we didn't have the capacity and we were launching China at the time. We didn't have the capacity anymore to really do a timely expansion for the game. So I think that affected the delay of the first expansion. What, what uh, would Burning Crusade have been hmm. had that team been kept in place and the morale had stayed as high as it could have been with uh, the huge I, success that happened? Well, Burning Crusade is a good expansion. I, I, I think that you know it, it would have been Burning Crusade, but sooner. <laughs> uh, right. And probably Metzen would have gotten his wish for playable Naga. He always wanted the Naga to be playable uh, as a as a race in World of Warcraft, uh, but there we were just rocked after that. I mean, the company the the the, the morale was it was really weird. It was super high because World of Warcraft was be, was becoming a cultural phenomenon, or or starting to like it, the word hadn't really spread even six months after launch when I resigned. It hadn't really spread. We we weren't on South Park yet, and I remember when when. I was talking to other game executives. They're being like, "Oh, that WoW game. How's how's that doing?" <laughs> and, right, right. And I'd be like, "Well, it's it's poised to do X a year." And they're like, N "What?" <laughs> like there was no comprehension of what a juggernaut it was about to become, mm -hmm. and a disbelief. Uh, I so knew, yeah, I kind of I kind of knew that because I I played Dark Age of Camelot, and I like the, the servers just like immediately died once World of Warcraft launched. There was no one playing Dark Age of Camelot. Like if you were an MMO player. You were playing World of Warcraft from launch, like no one else. Was, that's yeah. That's we played playing. Dark Age, we, you know, on the team. We played a, we played quite a bit of Dark Age too. Great game, uh, but yeah, I think I. But I think what really ha did happened wasn't set into play at, at Blizzard. I mean, the downfall of Blizzard wasn't until Activision came in. I think when Activision bought bought us, uh, that was, uh, and I wasn't there for that. But that was really the beginning of the end because up until then, Blizzard was very good at firewalling themselves because they had the lion's share of the revenue. They could say to the owners, "No, you're not going to have your HR in here. No, you're not going to have your IT department in here. No, you're not going to have your CFO in here. Uh, F off, basically. Uh, let us do what we do, and we'll keep making you money." And when Activision came in and the rise of mobile gaming happened, and they bought Candy Crush. Candy Crush made more money than Blizzard and the power dynamics changed. And at that time, I believe, and I wasn't there, but just from what I hear and what I've seen on happening, uh, I believe that that's when the, when Blizzard started to lose internal control. And I think that's, that was a big problem. The other problem was the rise of inter, uh, inter, inter team politics, uh, departments were getting really big. Uh, you had leads hiring people to try to like get more people, uh, to to be their army versus other departments and people were carving out territories as eh, money ruins everything at some level. <laughs> now, 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 can I ask, was it, is it true that the guilds with that guilds that people within the company belong to actually ended up being, uh, affecting people's promotions and hierarchy within, uh, Blizzard at the time? Uh, I that's the first I've heard of that. Tell me more about that. <laughs> that was after WoW launch. I mean, we hired some really great guild leaders who became, you know, uh, lead designers and stuff within the company. Uh, like I said, guild leaders tend to make really good uh, designers and really good executives. But what what happened there? Uh, they, the uh, the the story that we have heard uh, in the past here is that there were. Uh, within the company, uh, some dynamics based off of uh, not not quite in the same way that they would say, well, we take our smoke breaks together or things like that. Instead of it being this click that existed in the real world, rather it was a guild uh, and the the leadership of the guild and that you, in order to uh, progress in certain areas of the company, that it was to your advantage to be a per participant in whoever that manager or leader's guild was within the game wow. in order to succeed within the company. Well, it definitely became clicky. I can confirm that, that there were definitely clicks forming within the company. And I think it was a huge mistake when they moved to the new offices. Look, Blizzard used to be very flat. Anyone could come to my office and complain about the way we were making the game or complain about a feature we were doing, and I would listen to you. And, and no one had to be worried about being fired or anything for that. But when they moved into the new building, they key carded everybody off. So executives and leads were behind one key card uh, access. Uh, dev teams were another, and QA was completely key carded off. And QA often knows what's really wrong with your game. It was really great to hear from those guys because they're playing it constantly and they'll tell you what the scoop is. You know, that's, I think, what got CD Projekt Red into trouble is they didn't listen to their QA team. And as soon as Blizzard started cart, 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 
uh, compartmentalizing. And as soon as the politics came in, and as soon as the money came in and people were vying for power, these clicks formed. That was really, really disruptive for Blizzard's culture. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you had a wonderful time and we hope that you are making a difference in the world. Get out there and do something good. This video is done for the day, but don't worry. More videos on the way. 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, and 7.30 p.m. Eastern each and every day right here on the Pro Channel. And if that's not enough, check out That Park Place Online Podcast. What a name. What a channel. We call it T3PO for short. There's an ad sitting on thatparkplace.com on the main page. Go click on it. It'll take you to that new channel debuting Monday. Folks, we think you're going to really enjoy it. Long format discussions. Powerful on the internet right now. And we're bringing those to you as we continue to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun.